Now, I know you have seen many videos about nice guy syndrome, and I have received many notes and comments saying with vigor, well, Sarah, I just wanna be myself. Why can't I be this for women? I am a nice guy and I don't wanna change that. Well, that's what we're going to discuss today. And hopefully I can provide you with a different perspective as to what this does to a woman, how this makes her feel and how it kills her sexual attraction to you, especially long-term. It's not just about being nice. There is much more happening underneath the surface of your niceness that is making a woman repulsed. But before we dig into this, I want to ask you a very important question. Are you subscribed to this channel? Because 70% of you aren't, and I would be so appreciative if you did. It really helps the channel grow and helps me do what I love. So oftentimes when I speak to men about their wives or their girlfriends, they delight, right? They revel in the fact that they can be of service to them. It's one of the many things I believe that men aren't appreciated for. Their genuine desire to truly be there for their woman, to, to go above and beyond for them. But there's a fine line here that a lot of men struggle with. And at some point within the relationship, something shifts, right? And this white knight, the savior syndrome, the good boyfriend or husband comes to rescue because he believes that in order to receive love, he has to do things to earn it. So what do I mean by that? Oftentimes I see men all the time reaching out to a woman, asking inadvertently through his actions, through his words and through his behavior. He really wants her to say, you do so many good things for me. In return, I will do the same good things for you. But what this will ultimately do for a woman is force her into a corner, a corner that she does not want to be put into. Yes, I get it. You are a giver, a perpetual giver though in a relationship. You seem to always end up with a taker. You find yourself in these types of relationships where you're the one who's always giving, right? You're, you're always that person. You can never seem to find that one person that gives as much as you do. But have you ever wondered how the other person feels in this dynamic? And have you ever wondered, are you giving too much? The clingy person or the more loving person typically tends to put their relationship above everything else. So oftentimes it feels like there is this space in between where this person, right, the other person who's perpetually the giver never feels as though they're doing enough. It's essentially caretaking, knowing deep down that you're doing it to receive a good boy pat on the head. Now, what this does to your partner or the woman that you're in the relationship with is that it puts an inordinate amount of pressure on her. If they ask for space or if they try to do things for themselves without you stepping in, a massive amount of guilt hits them because they feel a sense of responsibility to coddle your feelings. Not only does this turn the pressure up to maximum for the other person, but it makes a woman feel like if she were putting anything ahead of you, even once, like work, you know, a commitment, uh, time with friends, that she's not valuing the relationship as much as you are. So therefore, when you're giving, you're really giving what you need in order to receive something in return from them validation, confirmation that they are invested in the relationship just as much as you are. To calm your anxiety, you go and get approval, but then you might resent them later for not appreciating what you're doing. By making a relationship the center and the only thing in your world, you're going to make a woman feel so much pressure. It's also a bit manipulative. Right, when I speak to nice guys, they never see it as such, as giving too much fosters an environment of fear and dependency in others. What this does is it starts to train the other person to feel obligated to accept your help in situations where they may not need it at all. They may not have, have even asked you, but you are trying to buy or do or create a sense of dependency and enmeshment so that that person sees you as valuable to them. All of this really comes from fear of what? Abandonment. When you are dependent on pleasing the other person, the other person is put into an endless guessing game about where they actually stand emotionally or how you're truly feeling about something. But the problem is that you're not really owning your own 
your own stuff, your own trauma. You just end up using the other person as basically your drug, using their affirmation as your hit to feel good about yourself. You're never asking for time apart or alone, time to do your own thing. It's almost as if you're only there to please her, which I know you have a great heart and you want to please a woman, but at the same time, it's this perpetual cycle that causes a woman to feel trapped by self-guilt rather than genuine reciprocation. A woman knows that you're doting on her and if she doesn't give you what you want, she's gonna feel like a bitch. It's like the Reddit thread, am I the asshole? She will start to wonder if she is the actual asshole. He was so nice all this week and I said I wasn't feeling well enough to spend time with him on the weekend and I just asked for some space and then he got upset. Am I the asshole? Now I want to read an exact quote from one of my clients who is a female that was dealing with this exact situation and who gave me permission to read some of this email that she sent me. He wants to please me so much and do whatever I want that I feel a lack of his own masculine assertiveness and become really confused what he actually wants from me. This ultimately kills my attraction for him because it feels very passive aggressive. He's literally always looking for validation about how I feel about him and about where we stand in our relationship. He wants it in text messages. He wants it in calls. He wants it in conversations. He wants it by seeing me smile. He wants it when we're intimate. I mean, come on. If I wasn't really fully attracted to him, then I wouldn't be having sex with him and spending hours a day and multiple times a week over at his place or vice versa. Why is he so needy? Knowing his well being is basically 99% dependent on this relationship with me. It definitely makes me feel guilty if I think I have brought him down. I feel the weight of that on my shoulders and it doesn't make me want to spend time with him. So a woman doesn't want to be a burden to your relationship, but she also doesn't want to play perfect or feel like she's hurting you because she can't always give you good boy brownie points. Women want you to be open and speak up, right, about hard topics, even if it risks you starting an argument. The main problem I see with women who lose attraction over time is this constant need to validate approval-seeking behavior. So how do you stop doing this? You have to recognize first that you're doing it. You need to realize that you don't have a backbone. You need to speak up for yourself, asking yourself, why you're going above and beyond for someone and stop. If you feel the slightest disappointment in your gut, if she is not acknowledging you or what you're doing, that means that you're doing it in expectation of receiving appreciation in return. If you feel like you are giving all the time in your relationships, then one, you need to assess whether you're with somebody who is a taker because she just might be that. And you might need somebody who is going to be able to give more to you and, and give more for the relationship in general. But if you also are feeling resentful and you're not bringing it up, if you're not saying, hey, I do this to make you happy and I expect this in return, if it, then you can't expect reciprocation. You can't expect her to read your mind. You can't get resentful for something that you're doing and expecting something in return when the other person has no idea. I know men you love hard and I know you go all in on relationships. That is a huge misconception about men that I think is a beautiful thing. But when you're doing it and when you are expecting all of this validation in return, you really have to start asking yourself if this is truly healthy for you and truly healthy for your partner. You're going to create this dynamic in the relationship that is completely lopsided. And no matter what you're a male or a female, I think that men feel this as well. Men feel that clinginess from women and it becomes entirely suffocating because it be becomes obligatory. And love is not obligatory. Love is something that you do and you show up every day to and you be in a relationship and you do things out of the kindness of your heart. But if you're doing it to calm your anxiety with how the, and you're wondering how the other person feels about you constantly, 
That is your job to self-soothe. That is your job to get affirmation outside of the relationship. It is your job to seek counsel, to understand that your abandonment is triggered and it's not about the other person. It is about yourself. So of course I offer one-on-one coaching. This is something that I have had to work through myself and I've had an amazing journey. I can give you specific tools, situations, solutions on how to really understand how to stop this pattern in your life. So thank you for watching. I hope this was helpful and I will see you on the next one.